I'm going to go through a couple of things that I think are first things to, that are important. And I don't know. I don't know if you can. Can you? I don't know if they can see this or not. Okay. Uh, these guys won't be able to see it. I don't know if the zoom or They may be passing around. That's a, uh, a drawing of our garden, which has now changed again. Not very much. It's just where we're putting things. We, we've grown gardens for years, but our gardens continuously change because sometimes we find that where we have things, we don't want them there. We want them to we want them somewhere else. And, and so, if, you know, you kind of have to look and say, your garden may not be like ours. And, and the thing it is, is that you have to understand our garden is all in either tires or grow boxes. In Diamond Valley, what we found, now we grew a lot in Salt Lake and the, the soil that we had in Salt Lake is completely different because I did wide row gardening up there and, and I, could make, I could make a nice heel and it would stay. Here, you do that and it goes away. So the best way that we found was in uh, boxes and I used tires also. And the other thing is, is that it gets stuff off the ground, gets a little higher. Because I'm too old to bend over to the ground and I'm not doing it. And he's even got higher boxes than I do. I told him, I said, make them higher so I can see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what we do. And then we also, um, we also more or less make our own soil. Um, I use some of the soil from Diamond Valley. And then I add other things to it so that I got, uh, I've got a good base in the bottom of the box or to, if I'm too hot, two tires high, the bottom of the tires really doesn't matter. I have, I've actually put, um, gone out in the ditches, in the ditches and taken that. all that, that silt and put it in the bottom because it will seep through. You don't, it doesn't really matter. You can put rocks in there. That's fine. But, but that's what we use is, is things like that. His, his, the, the big thing is, is in the top, um, where your roots and things are. They don't typically, unless you're growing, you know, deep rooted vegetable, they don't, they don't require much, you know, much depth. Six or eight inches is usually pretty good. But the boxes are nice because they, like I said, we get, it gets them up off the ground. Um, do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to tell them what we make? How we make our soil? You want to know what we yes, do? Yes, please. Okay. okay. It's if you you can get a compost, any kind you want. Now I used to use. Um, we used to have a redwood farm, and I used that compost. A what farm? A redwood. Red worm. Oh, red worm. Red worm. Black the, okay. Holes. The thing with red worms is that they they're not a deep worm. They are. A, they, they will only go down so far. Uh, six, eight, maybe twelve inches in the ground. And and when I had my redwood farm, I would I had boxes about the size of this table, and they were only eighteen inches deep. And and what we would do is I would feed them mostly the lamb manure because we had a lot of we had sheep at the time. And when you spread it on there, you don't have to worry about making it nice and neat. Because when it starts to level out, then you got to feed because they'll level it out by eating it and taking it back in. And then they, they repropagate their cells and they'll leave their castings and all that stuff. And then you have to go in, take them out, sift them, sift them out. And you're constantly putting, making more boxes. It just got bigger and bigger. It just, get, it just kind of got out of hand for us because we couldn't, we couldn't sift them fast enough so we kind of had to start killing some of them off. Uh, we threw them out but what we did is just threw them in the yard. And now I've got yeah, them got running them in through, throughout the garden. And I'll, I'll dig up some of the garden. I'll find the red worms in there. But they're a composting worm is what they are. So any kind of compost will work, okay? And what I do is I mix the same amount of compost with the same amount of peat moss and about half of vermiculite. And I mix that all in and I use a five gallon bucket. So I put five gallons of mulch, five gallons of peat moss, and a, and a half, a, half a five gallon bucket of vermiculite. Vermiculite holds the water in. If you're going to start your seeds, 
Start a new vermiculite, and that's it. Okay, and then once they get so big, that's when you transplant them into your little pots and go from there. You can transplant as many times as you want. So if you start them early enough and you, they're, they get rip bound, you can transplant, transplant, transplant until you can get them into the garden or if you're going to put them in a big pot. But. Okay, I worked with, I don't know if you know Dave Gust, anybody? Teacher. Mm -hmm. He is, but he did ag science, horticulture, everything. He's the one that has the greenhouse down at Dixie High. He's the one that starts all the plants in vermiculite. That's how I found out how to start my plants. Okay, and my daughter, my youngest daughter did a project of, from her lambs, from the red worms, to planting and mixing the mix and planting the plants and selling them off and growing them. She did her SAE project on that. And, uh, we also made, we made red worm tea. Tea, and he used to get it and we'd water with it down there. And I used to water with it. And you can't, you can the get way, red worm what, castings. What you do, what we would do is take the castings and I would get one of her nylons and I would fill it up with castings and then I would tie it on the fence and stick it in a five gallon bucket, bucket full of water. Perfect. And I would just let it sit for several days. And then I would take it off yeah, and you can take the plants. castings out and throw them back into the garden. But the, it makes a tea and uh, Fred knows about making tea. So, so it would make that tea and then you can just take that and right. water it right onto, the, onto your, your garden. That, that was the best year I had. But it's, it's, a, it's a great um, fertilizer if you want it. So that's all you need. We had a question out here. Well, mine was on the worms. Are they good fishing worms? No. no. You need. <laughs> They're too small. They're okay. too small. They're just little. And where do you get them? You, um, know, you can buy them online. You can buy them online. And as soon as my compost piles are finished, I'm buying some and throwing them in the compost because they will compost your compost. You mentioned tea. Don't want to get off the subject too no. far, but grass clippings and putting them in water, letting it kind of bake in the sun and make them kind of a a tea is that viable? I've never heard of that. So um, you, I, I don't have never used grass clippings, but if you want a very potent tea, two years in a row, I just put in plain old manure, you steer manure or whatever, manure. Yeah. and put in a small bubbler to keep the air going. Oh, yeah, in that. Well, and the grass and, is supposed to be like a high nitrogen type of stuff but. well the key to most of the teas is get enough living organisms growing yeah, in it's there. The organisms that you want and then those living organisms if you water with them it suddenly just increases the capability of that ground <laughs> to let go of its yeah materials and it and, replaces stuff too yeah so i could have a tub put some yeah. steer manure in there and water and let it cook yep and it helps to have a small bubbler a, a fish tank bubbler or whatever, just to keep enough air moving oxygen. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna caution you on a couple of things. Steer manure, horse hot. manure, things like that are very very hot, you and you cannot you take those mm -hmm. from the cow, the horse, or whatever, to and put it on your garden. But it You'll will work it. for a tea. Yes, it yes. will work for a tea. But here's the key with those: is it takes anywhere from 90 days. And sometimes a year, depending Two on your <laughs> chicken, chicken is hot too. Chicken is also hot. But Rabbit and if land, you can if you can get it that. out, cool. um, get some so, water into it and keep it a little bit moist. I had lamb manure that I had done that with, and I was out turning it. I was standing on top of it and I was turning it, and I thought, man, my feet are getting kind of warm. And so I went in. Um, I come from the automotive industry, and we have thermometers that you stick into the thing to see how cold they are, how hot they are, how hot the car is. So I went in and got one and stuck it in the ground and it was 210 degrees. Oh wow. <laughs> you know, so I was glad that I went, that we were turning it and cooling it down a little bit. But it, if, you, if you're not careful, it will internally combust on you. So be okay. careful with that. This came from the extension office. And this gives you the different areas in St. George because we don't go by St. George's. Or higher. So the closest thing we've got is Dameron Valley, and it tells you the spring frost date to the fall. And I'll pass this around, you can look at it. 
And this tells you on all your vegetables when you're safe for planting in the spring. I didn't run any off, I should have, but I didn't. Let's mention the spring prostate for Dameron real quick for those that are online and for the video. 5.5 five is supposed to be the latest freeze date and 10.1 is the first fall freeze date. So May the 5th to October the 1st. A, a good way to remember that is Mother's Day. Don't do anything till after Mother's Day. That's, that's kind of the typical <laughs> thing. And we learned that in Salt Lake. Our, it's interesting because our elevation here it's almost the same as is about the same as it was in Salt Lake. We're, we're about 41, something like that, 42. This is 46. 46. Does it, is it's it 46? Dameron, it's something like that. Dameron is. Yes. We're yeah. a little bit lower than Dameron. So. But at any rate, does, it, does yours say 46? Oh. Okay. Yeah. 45, 80. 45, 80. Okay. Yeah. We're actually higher than the valley in Salt Lake. Yeah. Believe it or not. But anyway, um, so you do have to be careful because of our elevation. You know, we're a little colder. If you're down in town, um, you can you can plant much earlier. If you're going to plant early here, like tomatoes and that, uh, should be awesome. Um, our recommendation is to, to cap them some way. I use my my the best way that I have is um, using um, walls of water. And I hate them. The I only thing with a wall of water them. is they're hard to fill and they're dang hard to empty. But the nice thing is, is, is they'll close up at night and they'll kind of reopen in the day and they'll protect your plants and you can get them in fairly early, but they're only, you know, a foot high. So once it gets above that, it better be warm or you're going to be in trouble losing some tomatoes. So as far as that goes, what I say, if you're going to plant a garden plant, what you're going to eat, don't just plant the plant. Um, and then what you plant, you better know how to use it. Okay, so if you're going to plant a plant, you've never planted it before, and you don't know how to use it while you plant it. That's why I think it's It's pretty. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's pretty. Well, you can throw it in your green drink and blend it all out. Okay. You know, so as long as you know what you're using and how to use it, then you're great. And then I also look at it, you know, what do I use the most? Am I going to cat off my garden or am I just going to grow it to eat fresh? That's what you have to do. And that's why before you even start a garden, that's what we do. We see we what we want to do. And we decide, are we just going to eat this fresh? Or are we going to can with it? And that tells us how many we're going to plant. Okay. Now he can show you how we plant because you can get more in a short, a small area than most people do. Well, so he'll show you that maybe later, but that's I'll tell thing. you what we did in Salt Lake. No, and a lot of people don't believe me, but that doesn't really matter. I planted 85 plants oh. in a very small area of broccoli. And people are like, you can't do that. And I said, I did. I know how and I can. So I'll, I'll show you one of the methods, the tricks that I use that I found out. Um, I didn't bring the book. Um, there's a book by Dick Raymond, The Joy of Gardening. I don't, it used to be a show every Saturday morning for all its oldies that used to watch. I don't know if he's not on anymore, but you can, I think, still get the book. Yeah, you can. But he does, he used to do what's called wide row gardening. That's more, than, more what we do. And that's why our boxes are the way they are. And there's a lot of things that he does that are a little bit off the chart, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, for example, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this well, but you take a box like this, and let's say this box is two feet by eight feet, okay? Um, and you can break it up. It doesn't have to be all one thing. Okay, so you can break it up into into sections if you wanted to. You know, like, have you heard of square foot gardening? Mm -hmm. Same kind, Same of, kind idea. of an idea. Here's one of the things that we learned with him was you can take say a four foot section in here and plant it like this. 
Now, you might wonder why I did that. The reason is, is because you can take and make what we call a salad garden. So what you can do is take your different lettuces, anything else that you want in your salad garden, put it into a shaker, and you open that up a little bit and go around and shake it and just fill it. It doesn't matter. It, it just won't hurt anything. And then you cover it and bury it and start to water it. And then you'll get all kinds of lettuces all, so all like this. And you just go out there and cut off what you want. Now, sometimes four feet's too much, so cut it in half. Just kind of figure out what you want. But you don't have to, I, I'm not a row gardener. I have not done rows in 30 years, I don't think. I just don't do them because I've learned other tricks and techniques. Okay, now here's a, here's a trick that I learned. Okay, basically what I'm doing, this is a, what I call a two and one, three and two, and a four and three. Now, people say, how, do you, how does that work? The, this is how I did the broccoli right here. And they say, well, it's too close. No, it's not. They say broccoli has to be nine inches apart. Well, here's the key. If I do a four and I do three, I have nine inches here, nine inches here, and nine inches there. It's really pretty simple. It's very, very basic, but it is a, it's a trick to, the, to being able to use a spe your space, a put more, space. more in, into a smaller space. You can do that with a two and one, a three and, uh, a, a three and two, same thing. And if they need to be a little bit more crunched, that's fine, it doesn't really matter. But the nice thing about this, when I did that with my broccoli, I had no weeds. You didn't have weeds because it covered up the ground and it didn't allow the sun to bring up the weeds. And, and when more moist. It, yes, it holds the moisture and it shades and cools off yep. yes, things a little bit. Yeah. So that's, those are some tricks that we've learned. Um, we just, I just don't, I just found that when I drive by and I see people with these nice straight rows and I'm going, too bad, dude, because I'll have to you all day long. <laughs> and you can, because you can actually get more in a smaller area like this. Dick Raymond, in one of his shows, they had a, this, these people that said, well, we can't grow a garden. And uh, he said, well, what have you got? And they said, well, all we've got is this space. Back in the Midwest, some of the driveways are like, two runs like this and grass in between. He went and dug up the grass in front of the garden in there. <laughs> and they produced a lot out of that, so. I just am sending out a companion planting. Now, a lot of people make a mistake because they say, I'll plant marigolds in the garden. Well, that's great, but marigolds can't grow by some certain things. My daughter planted some marigolds with her beans. She didn't get any beans because you can't have marigolds by your beans. So you got to watch what goes with what. You can't put dill by tomatoes. You want dill as far away as you yeah. can get it. Dill's bad for. It's great. I mean, we love dill, <laughs> but it's got to be over there, and that's how we do it. We just we have a, a spot that's on the back end of the garden where it doesn't really affect anything, and that's where it is. Now I heard zucchini and pumpkin should stay far away. Not true. Zucchini. Zucchini is summer. They won't cross. The winter. They don't cross. Okay, so what should not be by your pumpkin? I don't um, know of anything. Anything that is exactly the same breed. Yeah. Because you don't want them cross pollinate. You don't want to cross pollinate. But you can put. But I put. I put butternut squash and spaghetti squash together because they do not cross. Which okay. one? Butternut. Butternut. Spaghetti I've done butternut and the uh, what's the acorn. But doesn't zucchini and like yellow squash crook neck, they will cross. Yeah, I don't plant those together. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say they will cross. Because yeah. they're in the same so family. Right. So right. separate them. Yeah, you gotta separate. Yeah. Okay. I put my zucchini on one on my grow bed and my cherry tomatoes in the middle of mine. So crook yeah. is on the other end and then Yeah, fine. if you get in front of away, they're fine. And so this is what I did because we come up with so many ideas 
And so when we come up with an idea, then I put it in here, and then it's called my gardening Bible, I guess. We've got a book that looks almost Just exactly like thing, that, yes. And whatever, you know, if you're having problems with a plant, um, oh, then look you, it up. Then you do the research once, and you can look it up two or three years yeah. later and find and, it again. And yeah. find it, like alfalfa meal. Because if you want something to break down your compost pile, <laughs> alfalfa meal is, is a really good compost activator. It's the fat, one of the fastest one of the activators fastest. you can get. And that's why the lamb poop broke down really well because we fed them alfalfa. <laughs> okay? Cows don't eat a lot of alfalfa, by the way. Yeah. Alfalfa for a cow will um, bloat it. Well, if it's green. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even so. they, that's why if you put your cow hay, it's mixed. There's alfalfa and usually some other stuff in there, but usually just your straight alfalfa hay, they don't. Feed much of that. And now I check. You might be able to get away with it when it's when it's older. But <laughs> as long yeah. as it's dry. Just, yeah. okay. And you can take a soil test to the extension office, or you can do your own. I have a little thing in here that shows you how to do your own to identify your type of soil in the jar. Um, that one is mine. You can pass that around. If you want to find out what kind of soil you got, that will help you out with your garden so you know what you have to do. Now, I checked with the extension office quite a piece of it's, it's Rick Hasselbauer that is over the extension on the horticulture. It's pretty good. He, he has changed the, like that last sheet I sent around on the free states. That's the newest one because I've had some of his older ones and he's, he's done a whole lot more to know where the free states are now than he used to. Okay, and so um, but there's just, if you don't have printed, I learned how to do tomato, print tomato plants. We prune tomato plants, we prune, um, well, we prune most everything. Zucchinis, zucchinis. You, you cut all if the you get them off, off you can get them below the zucchinis, zucchinis, then you won't, you'll, you'll have a lot less, um, of the squash bugs because no, the, the, the leaves are not laying on the ground. You prune a zucchini up from the bottom and get the leaves as much off the ground as you can because when they're laying on the ground, that's what causes, that's where you get your squash bugs from. And, and uh, you know, they're miserable. But it also produces more zucchini because you're not feeding the leaves that you don't need. You understand? Mm -hmm. Do the same thing with anything that goes up. How do you prune your tomatoes? You just that's what I want to know. <laughs> okay. Um there's that I don't know, the, when we first planted stand. when we first plant them, and I'll maybe show, I'll try and do show you how plant them. Um basically when you get a tomato plant, you know, it comes in a little box like this, and it's got all these leaves coming out here and like this, but right here, it has a Y, okay? Take everything off. We love the sign instructions. Yeah. And then what I do is I lay it in the ground like this. All of this down in here will become root. And, and a lot of times I, it's more of a, more on an angle, but, but you wanna get your, your root ball in there so I you kind of put it down at a little bit of an angle, but then I bring them up and you can bend them. They, they'll bend pretty good. Just be careful. I broke a few, so. How do you prune it once it starts to grow? You, we just start taking all the bottom off. Just okay. the bottom ones? Okay, no. Okay, it, it comes up and let it get about this high, okay? And anything, when you first get the things to start, the, the little things that come out for blossoms, right? You can take all those lower leaves off because that's taking all the energy too. So then you start, once it starts to grow, anywhere there's a middle and there's a little thing coming out, pinch it off. That middle. That middle little thing, because you don't want that. You want the main. You want it to, you want some you want it to feed the fruit. Push it, you know, yeah. Let's draw a topic here, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Tomatoes, when you get a kind of a brown bottom on a tomato. Sometimes it's from over water. 
I, yeah. I, my we, well, no, you can, you can blame her all you want, but I've been down that road. And what we found out, and, and it's from hard knocks, is that, that once they start producing, cut back on the water. They produce more tomato if they're stressed in between. Okay. Well, and, and another thing, there's, there's a, this, this a there's a guy, there was a guy that, that would have tomatoes there's before everybody else. Pocket, and so. they finally went to him and says, how come you have tomatoes before anybody else? He says, it's really simple. He said, as soon as the, I start getting tomatoes formed, I go out and I cut halfway around the plant with my knife, with a knife. He goes about, you know, this far out. And he goes around and cuts around the plant about halfway around. What, he, what he's doing is cutting the roots. Yeah. It stresses the plant. It green. It takes those those tomatoes and makes them go ripe. So he's sending more. He's sending tomatoes to the market, and the other guys are going. My tomatoes going to ripen. And so, so he's making money, and they're they're still waiting. And that's what he told. That's what we learned was he was just cutting them about halfway. You can actually take a shovel if you want just. Go down, but you don't you get all pull that stuff out of there. It's just a whole bunch of information shoved down on tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's another that's another way. It's, it's it's called stressing the plant, like Fred was. So when about. the weather starts getting colder, sometimes it gets colder sooner here. Go out and go stab your tomatoes. All those green tomatoes. Cut them. You just want to take a knife and cut them. Cut them, and they'll start to ripen. Cut, the not knife, the, the, not the, the tomato. No, no you're the cutting the roots. In the root. You go down in the ground and make a and half that, circle. That far away from the plant. You just, and it cuts, you're just cutting the root. And, it's shocking. and it won't, oh, it won't kill a, it. Gotta, It'll just shock it. Because the roots will regrow. I, I got to ripen these tomatoes. And they ripen really fast. And then you're not picking all those green tomatoes off and waiting for them. At least, at least most of the way they're getting. So how much are you watering your tomatoes? <laughs> The, uh, not, you know, <laughs> one of the things that we've done is we have a water meter, a handheld water meter, and I'll go out and stick that in the ground, and and it's a it's got a, a thing on it about six inches, four or five mm -hmm. six inches, and you stick it in the ground and see what it says. If it says it's wet, don't water it. It's really pretty simple. So I carry it in my pocket, and and I know it sounds kind of dumb, but but I go out there and stick it in the ground. I'm not, not water. Okay, but I'll uh, be honest, we're gone a lot through the summer. Right. So we set our water, we have it all on the drip system right. and stuff like that. And we have to set it before we leave and it doesn't get touched again by anybody until we come home. Well, in the beginning, you can probably drip it a little more often. But as the season but goes would on. Would you say like every third day? Or, yeah. You know, and it depends on the weather. Sometimes the weather yeah, we leave hot, the end of this month and we'll be back for August. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> Two months you're gone? We are. You, that's a problem. Okay, then it's it really good when the tomatoes start to form because that's when you cut back on your watering on them. Yeah. Well, we just have you might water once a we'll week, week maybe every two weeks. Teach our friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might have to teach somebody how to, how to readjust it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's purely a watering thing. And like I said, we've learned that from the the hard knock because we're like then we got this and that and, and every year it changes because the weather's so screwy lately last year for example i got something i haven't seen for a long long time and i got those tomatoes um worms. worms i got a bunch of them chickens love them but you gotta you, you gotta, gotta find, them. find them. It to the you gotta find them What's that like? Huh? What's the huh? There are They're fine. Huge. Got a few. I know you have to watch the no, like, What was that like? Yeah. <laughs> then you can find them. Guineas will find them. And they oh, a black them. light. They do not scratch. You can take a black light out at night and they'll shine. They'll shine really? in there and you can pick them off at night. Oh, cool. That scorpion is just Yeah, they'll right. often go down at night. So, well, the, here's an interesting thing. Sometimes they hide. I was moving the, the, the tires that I had the tomatoes in. And so I basically have to take the soil out, take it over here, move the tires. It's a process like everything. But as I'm digging through the dirt in one of them, guess what I found? Great. The slugs. Mm -hmm. And they're yep. big, aren't they with the horn on it? Either? No, these weren't, they were not very big, but they, but there they are, the green worms that I, that I, I hate. And I'm, so I'm picking them up and squishing them, you know, and the whole thing, and you got the nice green, 
Good easy. You can just suck out of them and have them dinner. They can just look at because I was digging in my artichokes and I found you can two and they're probably that long and they had a horn on them. That's a different kind of a. Is it? Yeah. And that's, they have a hard brown shell on the outside. Of that's them. actually a hummingbird moth um, larva. Oh, is it? And and they fly just like a hummingbird. They're gorgeous to watch. Yeah. But that's what the larva looks like. Oh, is it? Do they do? Do they? Are they have any harm? None. They okay. they I'm are sorry. they're <laughs> a, a flower. You can just. I just throw it in there. There's no rhyme or reason. I just put it in there. So. Then we use another book from Jerry Baker. I don't know if you know who he is. He comes up with all those concoctions to kill bugs and stuff. He um, everything he that. uses is, is natural. Yeah. One of the one of the things that he uses, maybe I should tell him. It's for it's wild deer. It's it's he do he uses a, a, a mixture. And I can't remember what's all in it, but I can tell you what it, one of the big things that's in it is that's his male urine. <laughs> He's so. weird, but he doesn't do it in all of them. Most of the time, I use this what's called knock them dead, and that's what I spray. I don't use any of the commercial sprays on my stuff. Okay. Um, it's and I make it in a big five gallon bucket and sit it overnight. My girls will be sticking up the crotch because it's got garlic and onion and. Cayenne and a bunch what of stuff. One thing that it will do is it will sure. keep the rabbits away. Oh, yeah. The rabbits won't. The rabbits would come. It was funny because the rabbits come in, they go next door. They just hop right through my garden. And my neighbor back there was going, How come my garden's getting eaten and yours is not? I'm going, Well, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm sending the rabbits. Does it work with cats? Um, I don't know. I, don't, I never had cats in my garden either. They think it's their sandbox. Yes. I told them. But I don't know. I just, <laughs> I used everything natural because I, I mean, it's not like we didn't, but down here I started to. And it started all with the red worm farm. And I'm just, this is better. And it worked better. Do you have that recipe? Yeah, I should bring the book. I can give it to Fred and he can bring it. Which or posted on the yeah, posted on the yeah, it's, it's it on, the side. Post it on there. It's the one on the Jerry Baker. Not the dad. Oh, I, don't yeah. know the, I don't know that. He's got a whole. Well, he's got several, but the several. book that we we one that we have is is. Um, yeah, that's what you saw, wasn't it? No. No. This has a horn. Yeah, this one didn't have one. Oh, it looked just like the the, the ones that you find okay. climbing up your tomatoes. tomatoes. It was exactly. So right. those aren't. They don't hurt your garden, or they do. It, it, if it's a true hummingbird moth larva, they do not hurt the garden at all. They, they eat, they eat, the eat they eat leaves on the flowers. On the ash, or ash yeah, tree. ash. Oh. But nothing in the garden. Nothing in the garden. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Would they help decompose the ground? Probably not. Um, no, they're just a gorgeous moth to watch because they're actually a day, they're one of the very few daytime moths. Oh. And they'll they'll hover over flowers and pull the nectar out while they're a moth. Pollinate for you. Yeah. Now we do have them here in the valley. Oh, I think I've seen them around. Yeah. So what else? Oh, um, one of the questions that came up was when building your boxes, what can you build them out of? Anything you want. We used an old metal shed. Yeah. Just use people will say, <laughs> People will say, you know, you can't use this, you can't use that. And, and and they'll say, we can't use treated wood. I've never had a problem with treated wood. I've never had a problem with any wood that I've used, other than the wood just finally disintegrates and you have to rebuild it, but so what? But yeah, you can use pretty much anything. And you see, if you go around the valley, you'll see some of these that are built with with metal. The metal and all that. Is that so, your greenhouse? The moth. The moth. The hummingbird moth. And it's and the larva looks uh, or the caterpillar looks almost I exactly like the hornworm, but they're not on they don't go on tomatoes or anything in the garden. I mean he's got some cinder block boxes. <clears throat> Whatever you got, it just use well, I'm excited to use my tires for productive use instead but of trying to find a there's way a couple of, one of the things that I've done with tires is my bottom ones I don't cut them. Some of my top ones on the top I will 
cut part of it out so it so gives me more open. open the only thing that you're gonna that we run into is when we like if we put a tomato cage in because some of the tires aren't deep enough it won't go all the way in because it runs into the tire so what i do is i cut them i cut my my steaks a little bit and then put my tomato cage in but i have my tomato cages are fairly expensive tomato cages i don't buy the cheap ones anymore um, Walmart and those guys, they, they just fall over and they bend and they break. And so I, I went down to Steve Regan and I bought some fairly expensive ones. Are they, they the square ones? No, mine are round. Yeah, they're Steve Regan and they're really thick. Okay, and they're very sturdy. But they're expensive. They're expensive. If, they're I mean, if money's expensive. not an issue, then that's fine. But if you could reuse them year after year. Yeah, yeah we've used ours for several years. Jim, I bought them 20 bucks a piece when I bought them. I don't know what they are now. 40. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I bought a certain yeah. amount at one time and then I went back and got some more. So I didn't buy them on one big thing because they were kind of expensive, but they work. So. Yeah, actually our garden, part of our garden was started with some of the boxes that we used for the red ones. Yeah. <laughs> what do they do for these boxes? So I just used, I started them and then I started you building some, some <laughs> and I started building some bigger ones. Our, uh, we have a trellis, if you want to call it that. And what it is, is I use pick fencing mm -hmm. and, and I've got a box on each side and you just, I didn't, one time I didn't yeah, even- Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, it. just like that. And I, one time I didn't even have it tied down. And then so this last year when we got all the big winds, yeah. it started to pull. So I put some things on it to keep it tied down. Is that what you've got your beans on? Yes, I use that in beans. And you can do it with cucumbers? Yeah. And then they grow up and then the cucumbers are hanging down there, you just go flick them off. The one thing that we do do is I like to grow up rather than out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of plants that will grow up. Most of your squashes will grow up. Yep. My spaghetti squash we grew so up. So I'll put them on a like a piece of fencing. Um, we'll put them on that. I have them in tires and I put a piece of fencing up and let them grow up and over the top of that. Um, anything like that. Where you see the tomatoes in there? That was an awning. That is now my red and green apples. That's why we moved tires. I got tired of my plants freezing them. I didn't want to bring them in my house. So I got the rainy idea. Close it. Green well, green you're green. welcome. I mean, anybody's welcome to come over and see what we've got. I'm sure that you can go to the store. The weather is right. He's got a wall of feeding. We want to do 1259 West Topaz. <laughs> yeah, we want to tour. That's your nice years. You did the nose till this year, right? Mm -hmm. We're right on the bend in the road. We don't do a lot of tilling either because of the boxes. We have a little If you come, room, if you came from your house, what right down, right down Diamond Valley Drive. Uh -huh. And where it starts to bend yeah. at our house. Do you remember right. all the sheep that used to be there? That's us. That corral is now my garden. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so the first right turn, you're right, the house on the corner? You just follow Diamond Valley Drive and it'll just take you right around. Yeah, okay, so it's so not house. that first house. You have to go farther. All you, if you, if, I don't know how to explain it. To you. It's got a, it's got a it's white. My house is um, kind of yeah. so yellow. So we go this way and turn hands. right. If you came down, Straight down here. oh, and then you turn right, you're gonna. If you came down Sapphire, up Topaz or down Diamond Valley Drive, and right. We'll there. just follow you, Mom. If you go down <laughs> Sapphire, <laughs> if you if you go down Sapphire, where it tees, you're looking at my house. Okay. Okay. It's pretty simple. Horse corrals. No, no, that's this corner. Okay. Well, it corner. used to be the person that owned it. Brand new house on the corner, across the street. No. Are you talking um, about? Well, it's not that. Well, oh, five years. Six, oh, it's already five years. No, it's been longer than that. The beards are six or seven years. It old. used to be an empty lot. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, That's so across the street. Yeah, yes. across the street. Sorry. Yeah, I don't think of it as We've a been here 29 house. years, so it's it new. was empty for a long time. Yeah, I know, because when we were there, we had me on that side. Yeah. If you know Bob Hamilton, he lives next door. Okay, yeah, I know Bob. We're north of Bob. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's, that tells you. Um, I want to go back to 
planting and planting now, and that's that's really crucial. So is your garden in? What do you have in My your garden? My garden is no. not in yet. I have garlic. garlic in. And today is May 12th. I have garlic in. We have garlic in from last Peas? Do you grow peas? No, no. I don't grow peas. I don't think they're worth We planted today. peas three months ago. Unless you're going to eat them just out of fresh, but I won't put in a big patch. I don't like to pick them and do all this stuff. Them. Some people, I mean, if you can get, just pick the small ones and freeze them, they're great, but I'm not into that, so I don't, to me, it's a waste of time. I'm just fresh. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and so yeah. you can plant, plant, a little, plant a small Because you can till that stuff back, because that's called green, what's it called? Green manure. Green manure, and you can till it back in and plant something else in when your beans are gone. Yeah, our peas yeah. are in our sweet potato raised bed box because the peas finish about the time the sweet potatoes take over. Yeah. yeah. That's another thing is you got to understand. Okay, so last month, from... last two weeks ago, I asked about my potatoes because they froze, but not all of my potatoes were up. So I have still have potatoes. Just the ones that froze are gone. Right, same here. It's a little, actually, probably it was a little early to actually plant potatoes. Probably. Oh no, no, they're they're Not fine as long as they're completely as covered. They're in the ground, it's fine, but when they start coming up and you get the frost. So I'm gonna yeah. tell you something my dad told me. My dad's from Idaho, he's an old spud. And uh, I said, Dad, so do I need to go get feed potatoes, you know, from the feed store or whatever? And he said, No. He said, go to the store, whatever size of potato you want, buy that potato. And then just make sure you cut out so there's at least two to three eyes in each one. And I and he says, now I'm going to tell you how to plant it. And I said, okay. So he says, stick your shovel in the ground, stiff it forward, drop the potato in, take the shovel out. And that's how they. That's literally how they plant them in Idaho. Yeah. All those because because they just don't have. They, a lot of them have a deal. They just shoot them in, boom, 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 boom. But you know the smaller guys, they just use a shovel, put them in, and they're good to go. And my to last year potatoes that were puny. Just went in a bucket in the basement. Next year they come out, they've got roots on them. Stick them in the ground. Yeah. But I like the little potatoes. I eat them. We don't eat a lot of potatoes. So, so I don't grow them. I just buy those little teeny butter potatoes. Yeah. You can have a potato. Yeah. So that's another one of the things that you can do. You can do the same thing with sweet potatoes, but I'm going to tell you something with sweet potatoes. There's two different kinds. And you don't know which one you're buying in the store because some sweet potatoes go down, go down and, some, go and some spread. How do you grow, Fred? Uh, so they're on the top and spread out? I they spread out like crazy. So I put them on a huge four or five foot fence to get them up. And yeah, but the potato itself. So, oh, the potatoes. Are they way down or are they are? No, they're usually down. just barely under. Okay, so he's and we grow four they're different the ones kinds. That spread out. Because because there are potatoes that will grow down, sweet potatoes that will grow down, and, and the other ones will grow out like this, and and they get pretty massive. We yeah. just found that information out. And yeah. aren't the ones that grow down the kind of long, skinny ones? I don't know. I don't know. So that's uh, bigger. Part of the thing, success with sweet potatoes is lots of heat, lots of water, poor soil. Poor soil does better than, than amended soil for sweet potatoes. Yeah, you got to know the soil type for the certain plants. But if it's hard, well, that, no, it, um, I've had the best luck with sweet. It's the only thing I actually till because you have to dig them out every year, which means you're turning over the soil every year. Uh, the rest of them I don't dig because sweet potatoes do have to grow in the soil. But it does take a, a fair amount of water. You do have to have a good amount of water going in there and then they'll take all the heat you can give them so okay. south side um against a wall where the heat is just sucked into that concrete all the way around it they they do wonderful in saint george they don't do quite as well here because we're well in mine i started too late and they were just barely starting to bloom when i mean expand yeah. when i dug them up yeah. so and then i have if you looked at my 
But I have, I have a whole herb garden. Because I grow herbs and I cut them, dry them, give them to everybody. Well, here's, the, here's one thing we learned, and this was we, we, we were trying to grow lavender. I'm still struggling with lavender. lavender. Yeah. Because I use it. If huh? you make, I've never been successful in lavender. You're probably, you're probably over water. Okay, we did find this out. Lavender, you only water once a, once a week. No, one, once every two weeks. Well, they don't like a lot of water. They hate water. They hate it grows kind of like sagebrush. Yes. It's stuck. The stock is like sagebrush. Yeah. Okay. And then so we here I, I was going around watering it, giving it all this water. Right place, water and, and so we start doing some research on it. And said and, and then it said and then it depends on the variety you you only you only put a little bit of water on it. So when you water the water that you just put a little bit of water on every week or two. And it works, it, they actually work pretty good. Our lavender plant got about like that last year. So it's a desert. Yes. Yeah, and I, you know, I thought, what is wrong? Because I was asking Tina, she couldn't, she couldn't do it either. So I started doing research, and I thought, I'm going to call up to a Young Living Farms. And say, How do you grow your lavender? What kind do you grow? Because I have tried several varieties, and some do well, some don't even grow here. So um, I picked up one from Star. They're supposed to bring stuff in that can grow here, but that's not always the case. Hate to tell you, if you're going to do any anything down here, call, go to Ballard's and Hurricane, because they grow for every area. They may have plants for every area. Oh, let me just tell you one thing that you don't know. If you're buying plants from Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, they're all coming from the exact same place. If you go in there and look, it'll say Bonnie's on it. Or another thing. And, and what they do is they come in. Um, now, some of you know, don't know, but I used to work for Walmart. In the last few years that I was with Walmart, I transferred from the automotive department. I was a, actually a manager and I stepped down, went down to the garden center. And so I saw a lot of these things that were going on. And I was like, that's very interesting. But what happens is Bonnie comes in and they have a truck load or whatever's in the truck. And depending on who they're at at the time, they come in and they say, oh, this is what we have and that's what we get. But if you look on them, they'll all say Bonnie's on them and they're coming from the exact same place. They come out of the exact same truck because he comes in, he stops at Walmart, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, and, and he just dumps in what he has. And, and some of the stuff that they have, and I was watching come off the truck and I'm like, that stuff looks like crap. And it does. So you have to kind of watch, but some of the stuff looks kind of bad. You can, you can TLC and it'll come back. Um, one of the things that I was gonna talk about real quick was um, uh, peppers. Oh yeah, I had to get a bush. Well, there's a couple of things. When I plant a pepper, um, I should have brought, I take a matchbook. The paper matchbooks. And now this sounds kind of odd, but I dig my hole for my pepper, okay, my pepper plant, and I, I take the matches, I take the matchbook, and they have two layers in there, right? So I take the two layers apart, and you can use either both or half. And sometimes I'll tear one in half, and I the, 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 the little match part is up here. I lay one this way and one this way. So I lay them in the ground right here, my, my matches. Okay, and then I put about an inch of soil over it. And then I plant my, my pepper plants. The sulfur. Exactly. They like the sulfur. The sulfur, whatever. But they like the slow release of the yeah. sulfur. And, and this is what will release the sulfur real slowly, but it's also biodegradable. So if you ever dig it up, you'll find the matches don't exist. Say if you've already planted your peppers, is it still possible to somehow put that in? Um, I've heard of people kind of going around the edges. Put it around the side, but make sure there's soil all up. So yeah, you could do that, probably. But that's one thing. And then also, if you go into your pepper plant and top it. It gets so far up, you know, and it starts getting really wobbly, and they just keep going 
slender and slender. Mm -hmm. Chuck that top off and you'll end up with a nice green pepper bush. You get more peppers. I wanted to Stress. ask you about the herbs. Yeah? Do they lack, could, do they stay, live through the year here? Most of them. Oh yeah, I have, okay. Some herbs do not come back. So like basil, you'll never get it to come back. It's too tender of a plant, so I have to plant it every year, the sweet basil. But uh, rose, and if you get the right rosemary, it will come back. Um, oregano, thyme, chives. My chives are all ready to cut. I've got blossoms coming on them. Incidentally, um, on chives, when they start to blossom, use, you can use, use the, the blossoms. blossoms. Put them in your salad. They decorate them up really good. They taste just like the chives. You it's don't want them great big, but if they're just, you just a little, pull the head apart and sprinkle it. Yeah, you can kind of chop it up and sprinkle it. It gives it kind of a color because they're kind of a purplish color. Mm -hmm. But they taste good. You can just put them off and eat them. They're good. So they will, most of them will come back. Yes. Yeah, and I agree, Marjorie, that has to be replanted. Do you cover them in this winter? No. No. If anything, you just let them be. It, parsley will grow through the winter. Some parsley Some will, parsley some do. I lost mine. I'm replanting it. But the one one of the problems that we've had with that, and I, I don't know if it's the variety, but sometimes when it comes back the next year, it's kind of woody. It was really weird. And well, they do go to seed in the second or third year. No, well, that probably was my problem. So yeah. I'm putting in new this year. Yeah. I plain dug it up. Um, peppermint so, comes back every year and it contains in my tire. Because if you've got it in the ground, it'll take over everything. everything. Yeah, I made a mistake of putting some. Mint Spearmint under my fruit, under my fruit oh, no, trees. You don't want to do that. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, another yeah. thing, Wild. I've got spearmint everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> another thing is like berries, some of your blackberries, stuff like that. Um, you have to contain them, or or they will go it everywhere. It's like raspberries; <laughs> they go all over. They go. But here's the interesting thing: I was reading a thing, an article on that, and they said, "Well, you can." dig down and put a, a barrier around it. And then they said, the only bad thing is that go underneath the barrier. And come back well, up. It'll actually put the cane over right and drop the forward. nose in and, and grow a root on the nose of the cane yeah. and spread that way too. But I figure I've got an acre, why don't I just line the entire side with blackberry and if it'll ever take over, then I've got blackberries. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, you can do that, but I just, just cost me. And some people just go out and water. they just cut them out. You know, just yeah. kind of. That's what your mom and dad did. They used no, to. No, my dad, my dad let them grow, and they just took over a whole area. Well, yeah, but they cut some. Of them. Aph aphids on pepper plants. I've never had. I've never got them on, on pepper plants. I've got aphids all over my peppers I mean, in the greenhouse. One year we don't have it, and next um, year I can't. I'll you got I'll, I'll help you. I'll give you that book, and you can look at it and see if there's a thing from. Oh, I put miracles with them. And the marigolds seem to have kept that the aphids off. Keep them away. Yeah, I mean, that's why they say do plant marigolds in the garden. Kill or every plant. Home remedy, everything. And and the well, the other key to aphids, and I did find that this this season, is get out there and spray them off every single day. And um, they don't have enough energy to climb back up again. So if you can spray them off every day, you'll knock them out in about two weeks. Oh. Of course, if you're not here for two and a half months. Yeah. I don't know if Jerry Baker has some for aphids, but I think he does. So I'll give Fred the book and he can post it. I've never had aphids on my pepper, so I don't know. I've had them other places, but it just yeah, started where they wouldn't bear. I mean, they were so weakened by the aphids, they just wouldn't bear. Yeah, I've never had that problem with peppers. I, my peppers Out, produce outdoors, like I have never had that problem, but in the greenhouse, they just took over. It might be because of the moisture. Yeah, it's 80% really humidity. <laughs> <laughs> You're just in time for us to end. You're here to say the closing prayer. Oh, that's good enough. <laughs> so, so anyway, the big key right now is get, the, get, get it in the ground. Get it, you know, whatever you're going to do, try and get it in the ground as soon as possible. Yeah. You really got, Now's the time to start climbing. You, you've got until probably the first part of June. And... And you're still okay, but the sooner you get it in, the sooner you're going to be able Further to get it. Further you do now, the worse it becomes. So. Um, and one another thing that, that you can do, and this is one of the things that we do sometimes, is we get with we have one of our kids lives here in the valley. So sometimes we'll get with them. And last year, for example, they grew tons and tons of tomatoes. 
So we let them, we used their tomatoes and then we used our, our peppers and our, our uh, cucumbers and things like that to make different sauces and, and stuff like that. So that's another thing you can do is, is if you can work with somebody to help you. I can't get my onions to make a good bowl. They, they all just look like oversized green onions. Mm. How do you? We, we don't remember often enough, but you're supposed to actually either clip them off or, or bend, them, bend them, over. them over. Actually, I, the last thing I read on that, they said, don't do it. Um, I think I, and I've heard both. Hot. I, I've heard, it depends on the onion variety. Yeah. You have to actually plant the right variety. Why don't you? I just bend them over and see what happens. Yeah. It's no, an experiment. Or, like I said, the gardening, gardening is an experiment. experiment. I have morning glory all through Good my luck. garden. It's, it's uh, bindweed, actually. It's probably not morning glory exactly, but it's horrible. And the only way to get rid of it is to dig it out every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep it I know. I just, well, I take yeah, it good luck. all year long. <laughs> I was out this morning for a full hour, loosening the soil, pulling it up with the root that far mm -hmm. to try and get rid of the root. <laughs> so, do you ever get it out of your garden? Um, you know, and I go for the roots. You know, because it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Garden. Raised beds are easier to control on that because yes, you've got a smaller so, area. Yeah, that's another reason why I put mine in boxes because I don't have to weed half as much. You can go spray between your boxes. And, uh, you can do on your peppers if you plant them close enough, you get the same thing. You they'll they'll cover the area and you don't get as much. And you can also put stronger cold and moisture in. Yes. Okay, now they do have a fish. Um, it comes in a gallon. It's well, that kind fish of emulsion. Fish. Yes. Yeah, it stinks like. I thought, well, the pilgrims did it with fish and might as well water with it. It actually and works. It works. It's a it's it's a it's like a fertilizer. It's kind of like that. And then it's all natural. So I was at Star Nursery and um, we have a little girl that works at Star Nursery in our ward, Jeffries. And she goes, You need this on any kind of plant when you transplant it. And that's called Dr. Q's something. And and it keeps it from going into stress. And she was right. Is and that mixed like a B? teaspoon into some. Into um, I don't know if it's. What's it called? Dr. Q's. I'll have to look and I'll, I'll have to look and let you know. Yeah, but it, it, it works on flowers, vegetables. But when we plant, we take you mix that in water, you mix so much to a gallon of water. She's and then you just, you just branch it good. And, uh, and, and it's, I found that it's really, it's, this it's, that works year. really, really well. Uh, that's been our, that's one of our go tos now. We had one of them. We have slugs in our strawberries every year. How do you get rid of slugs? Um, I don't know. Uh, I've never I done think with slugs. I think there's a thing in, in uh, Jerry Baker. I think there is. Right. So, do you remember everything everybody's asking so I can give them to you? <laughs> <laughs> if you look it up and text it to me, I'll include it in the notes on our. Okay. Okay. On our thing so slugs. I don't have a pen. So, so, looks like we're full of time. So, you actually are right on the thank you. Right on the mic. Yes, thank you. I learned a ton. Right. It doesn't work. You need a pan. Yes. I have a, oh, use a marker. Okay. Slugs. Okay, with slugs. Aphids on peppers. And what else? The um, squash bug? How do you water? Did you see the squash bug thing? I water 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 yeah, I didn't read it through. The only two things I found successful with squash bugs. And this is this year. Shop back and guinea hens. Yeah, no, well, we go out at night and spray. Yeah, there way. Well, I didn't have any hurt last year at all. But a part of that, I think, is because we were trimming and getting keeping it off the ground. Yeah. Cool. So yep. yeah, but that's all we do. And it planting to us a garden is an experiment it, every year, every single year. And is it true you shouldn't plant the same thing in the same spot? Right. If you Not do, necessarily. take part of the soil out, put new in. Oh, okay. No, okay. only there's really only certain things Some that things. require that. But I, I mean, I plant tomatoes in the same spot. 
Now, what I do do is I do sometimes want to take some of the soil out and add some new soil in, or I move it. You know, I move from here to there, and then and then I turn it back in, and, and it's that's basically doing the same thing as if I moved the plant. So, and people are like, that doesn't work. And I'm like, well, that's for me, so I don't know. Thank you. Gardens are forgiving. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes.